Did you know that you get to use a calculator when you take your GED High Setter Task Test? In this video here today, I'm going to show you how to use a calculator and how it can help you. But before we get started, let's hear a quote from GED Testing Service. You don't have to have a math mind to pass the GED math test. You just need to have the right preparation. Now, I have lots of students that have taken the math test and have successfully passed because they know how to use a calculator. And then I've had a few other students that didn't really learn how to do the calculator and they didn't score quite as well. So I'm so thankful that you're here watching this video so that you can learn how to use the calculator so it will help you out. Welcome to Purely Persistent. I'm Michelle. Now, one thing that's important to note on the calculator, if you are taking the high set or the task, you get the calculator the entire time. However, if you are taking the GED, you only get to use a calculator on a portion of the test. Now, this calculator here is the TI-30XS. This is a great one to practice on. And if you're taking a test in person, it's likely going to be the one that the test proctor gives to you. However, if you're taking the test online, I'll be showing you all of the functions with this calculator, but you'll be using it online, so it just might look a tad different. Now, in this video, I am going to start with some of the basics, but if you don't want to do the basics, check out the timestamp for the video down below and skip to where you need to go to watch the video. Let's get started. Okay, so now let's learn a little bit about the calculator because there are some things that, if you've never experienced a calculator like this, you might just need to know. Okay, so right here we have the on button. Huh, imagine that. Uh, the two here is the second, and that's really important because if you look really closely, you can see how parts of the calculator are in like a yellow or a green, and if you hit this two or this second, it's going to help you be able to access the next part. So the three here will actually, if you hit the second, and then the on button, then we'll actually turn the calculator off. Huh, or else you can just like not do anything and it'll turn off automatically eventually. Okay, number four is enter. That is going to be the equal sign. That's the equal key. Five is answer. Okay, so you have to hit the second and then the answer. So right here you hit the second and then the answer. and what that is going to do is that's going to pull up the answer that you had before, okay? Um, you don't actually always have to do that. You can just hit like plus and it will automatically bring what the answer was before. The six right here, we've got the little double arrows. Basically that toggles, which means it just like goes from one setting to the other. So maybe it goes from fractions to decimals to square root that sort of thing. So this is a really handy key in case your answer is not exactly what is one of the answers in the options. So this is a really handy key to have in mind. And then seven, you can see there are lots of little arrows. What these arrows are going to do, it's really handy in like fractions. You're going to be able to just move through whatever equation you've typed or move over, that sort of thing. It's a really handy key. So now that we know a little bit about the calculator, let's practice some questions. All right, so let's start with just some basic arithmetic. Now we know PEMDAS, right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's just going to be the order of operations. So we have parentheses, exponents, uh, please excuse, multiplication, <laughs> division, addition, subtraction, right? So that's kind of the order. Now, I have great news for you. Our calculators are really smart. So they've, they've got this down. So basically, what I'm going to do here is I am going to just type it in exactly the way that I have written right here. So I'm going to go eight times. Now I wanna do a negative, okay? So a negative, if you look right down here, it's 
where that little answer key is that we had before. So 8 times negative 4 plus 7. And then I just hit the Enter key, and we get negative 25. Okay, so this little negative key is probably the most important thing to know on this. The rest of them, eh, we've done it all before, right? So multiplication, division, addition, subtraction on a calculator like this is basically just like you would do with another calculator. So not a big deal. Okay, now we're going to move on to percentages. And I could actually just leave my equation there and it would go directly to the next line, but I'm actually going to clear it. So here's the little button, clear. All right, so let's move on to percentages now. So let's say I have, I want to figure out what is 80%, so I go 80. Now here we have the little percent button right here, and we know in order to access the percent, what I need to do is I need to hit second and then that little parentheses, and that'll be percent, right? So 80% of, or I'm just gonna say times, and I'm going to say 75, and then equals, and so 80% of 75 is equal to 60. Now, is this something that you need a calculator for? No, you could just do it by yourself. But remember, this is a timed test. And so if you can use your calculator as a resource, it will really help you as you are taking the test. So let's move on to fractions because we know that fractions are probably going to be on that test, right? So the way to get to a fraction is we have this little button right here. So this N D. So that's the numerator over the denominator. So I'm going to click that and you can see here it has two little flashing, I guess little squares. Okay, so the flashing square is the square that we're on. So we're going to say four and now I have to hit that little arrow key. So four and then down to five. And now if I started doing anything else, oh look, it's going right in. That's not what I want. I want it to be over. So I'm gonna go back one and see how it's flashing right there on the plus. Then I can just hit delete. And so here we have delete right there. Okay, so I got rid of that plus. So now I'm going to arrow over. Okay, so we have four fifths and we're going to add six uh-oh, I clicked the six before I hit the little numerator denominator button, but look, oh, it just brought it up there for me. So four fifths plus six eighths, and then arrow over, equals. And I get 31 twentieths. Now, I teach fractions in my math class, and let me tell you, the calculator is the way to go, right? Adding fractions, yes, we can do it, but it's kind of a hassle, right? So this is so much easier, so make sure you really know how to use the calculator. But what happens if your calculator, or rather your problem, is a mixed fraction? Let's try it. So let's clear this out. Okay, so for a mixed fraction, we are going to hit second, and then we've got the whole number with the numerator and the denominator. So let's say five, and then we arrow over, two, arrow down, thirds, and we're going to multiply by so we're going to hit that toggle or that key again, the second key, multiply by eight and five thirds. Enter or equals. Holy smokes, that is a really big number. Now notice how that number is an improper fraction. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems like kind of a pain to get that to go from that huge number and turn it into just a regular mixed fraction, right? Instead of the improper fraction. So what we can do is we can hit second 
And then see this, it goes numerator over denominator. Toggle back to the whole number with the numerator and the denominator. Let's click on that and look at that fancy number and enter. Da, da, da. So much easier, right? So 54 and 7 ninths. And if I wanted to go back to it, I would just do the same thing. Bring it like that. And that will bring it back to the improper fraction. But now let's get even fancier. Let's say I want it to be a decimal. Okay, so we can hit second and then look at this button right here. It goes fraction to decimal. So let's click it. Look at that. Pretty handy, right? So 54.7777777. Eight. <laughs> the reason they put the eight there is basically because it just keeps going and going and going forever at seven, but they rounded it up because the calculator doesn't want to go infinitely, right? <laughs> Next, we're going to do scientific notation. And this is really handy for science, okay? So when you're talking about things that are really, really big, like maybe you're talking about space, how far things are in the universe, you need to know scientific notation. And also when things are really, really, really small, like atoms and molecules, scientific notation is used, okay? So our calculator here has a really handy way to do scientific notation. So let's say it is five, and then we have our little scientific notation button here, times 10 to the little n, and the little n is for whatever number you want to put in there, right? So let's say 5 times 10 to the 4th, and then just enter, and there we get 50,000. Okay, let's try it again, but this time let's go 5 times 10 to the, this time let's say negative so before we were going really big, now we're going to go really small, negative 5. Look at that. And so really, scientific notation is all about just kind of moving the decimal point over. But the calculator does it for us. Woohoo, calculator. Give this video a thumbs up if you are going to use the calculator on your test because it's so great. Next, we're going to go over powers, okay? So I can go five squared, and here we have a nice little squared button, so that's super easy. So five squared equals 25, right? But what if I wanted to do something that wasn't a square? So let's say I go five, then I can just hit this little arrow. See the little, the little carrot? So five, carrot up to, let's go five, five, to the fifth power. So five times five times five times five times five times five. I think I said that five times. And there we get 3,125. So that little carrot's really handy. So now let's take a look at the square root or the cube root, okay? So here we have the square root. It's kind of hiding because it's not as common. Square root of 25. We know that, right? Five, five times five is 25. Let's do a cubed root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit three and then second, bring it right in there. And now I've got the three with a little square root, but it's a cubed root of 125. Do you know what that is? It's five. Five times five times five is 125. And you could put any number in there in place of the three, okay? Now those are the main things that you're going to want to know how to use the calculator. Those are the main things that are going to be on your high set GED or task test. A lot of these like sine, cosine, tangent, that's for trigonometry, which is not actually on the test. And I mean, we do have our little, our little pie there. If you need to figure out the circumference of a triangle or of a circle, you can do that. A few other things. Now, I really encourage you to spend a bit of time with the calculator, okay? There are emulators online, just in case you don't have an actual calculator like this, okay? Practice some 
practice problems using the calculator so that you can use it as a tool so that you can get through this time test a little bit more efficiently. Now, if anyone hasn't told you today, you are enough, you are an important person in this world, I believe in you, and go rock that math test, right? Use this calculator and go rock the math test, pass it so that you can move on to bigger, better things in this world. I believe in you. Make sure you believe in yourself. Peace.